Hello, my name is Roy Cohen, and I'll be hosting this week's edition of the Community Forum Show, which I hope you'll uh, watch because we have some uh, well-known subjects to chat about. Um, that I think you'll uh, a lot of people are curious about, and we got the two experts on to uh, take care of it. I think one. <laughs> well, that's Eddie, what I mean. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, don't be shy, Eddie. Um, Eddie, I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you're a former selectman, correct? Yeah, I uh, served with you back in the day. Well, that's so long ago, and I'm uh, <laughs> getting to the point where I'm, I'm starting to lose it. Uh, but gotcha. Eddie, is, Eddie has a, a vast knowledge of what's going on in town. You name the subject, and he's right there for you. And I also have on with me uh, Phil McNulty. Phil is the water and sewer superintendent here in uh, Stoughton. Uh, gentlemen, let's get started. This first subject uh, is the water situation. You sent around uh, a notice, which uh, I think is scaring some people. But I think with what's going on with that train, uh, the train derailment, the water supply up in uh, uh, in Ohio, I think that's uh, people are worried that maybe we're starting to have the same problems here for whatever reason that's causing it. Maybe you can start us off, Phil, with uh, uh, your, your assessment of our water supply. Yeah, so um, it, it's human nature to be concerned about things, especially, as you say, with Ohio situation going on. Um, here in Stoughton and our surrounding, you know, north in the northeast, and especially in and around Stoughton, um, all the towns are dealing with the same PFAS issues, Canton, Brockton, um, Easton, Sharon, uh, having to put in carbon you know, embark on a funding and design and installation of carbon filters to remove PFAS. In, in the latest um, water and sewer billing and trash billing, uh, we, by regulation, we need to include um, anytime we have a well that exceeds 20 parts per trillion, we have to mention it and, and, um, and, and notify every resident who is a, uh, a water customer. So that's the reason that's in there. Um, and can you give us a uh, explanation of what PFAS uh, stands for? Yes, P PFAS stands for polyfluoral alkyl substances. Um, it's in the 40s and 50s, it was used for in firefighting foam, um, as a stain and water resistant products for clothing and furniture. And you know, how it, how it got to the groundwater supply is you know probably th through the air into the ground and ultimately into the water system. So it took many years to do that, to get there, but here we, we're the end users and we're having to deal with it. Um, um, it's not, it's not something that's changed in the water supply. It's, it's, it's a new regulation. We'll make that clear. That's it's the same water we've always been drinking. It's just that it's a new regulation. Um, this, the state of Massachusetts has adopted a number of 20 parts per trillion. The federal government does not have a regulation, and they have a guidance of 70 parts per trillion. That's just to put things in perspective. So we have a very conservative number we're working with. Um, just, you know, that should give people some comfort that, uh, you know, that the state of Massachusetts has chosen a conservative standard for the PFAS. That's good. Okay. Eddie, any comments? Uh, no, I, I just did, like I didn't know what the definition was, so that was helpful. Uh, but you had mentioned Ohio, and I just uh, saw something on TV that's uh, I don't think the EPA is letting those people know everything. The stuff they see and and so forth on the ground. They, I think you uh, Phil mentioned about this particular item it took time to get into. You know, of water. Those poor people out there. I think it's going to be a lot sooner. And they're going to start having problems, but and the other thing was uh, FEMA won't give them any help. 
because they said that's only for things like tornadoes and that kind of stuff. But I mean, sounds like it's kind of a disaster to me. But anyway, it is what it is. So, yeah, doesn't sound good at all out there. Thankfully, no. it's uh, not here. Um, mm -hmm. Is is our water supply adequate, uh, Phil? Do we have uh, enough water? Uh, we've just gone through a drought situation. Uh, and uh, obviously, the, there's been a lot of rain to replenish the supplies. But I, I, up, up north, there's no uh, uh, measurable snowpack that's going to Im impact the uh, water supply, is there? Uh, no, I mean, you know, but for our region, um, the state, you know, you're talking about New Hampshire, Vermont, so, so forth. But here in the state, the... Uh, the DEP breaks it up into regions, southeast, northeast, uh, central, and west, and they categorize how the drought is doing in those particular reason, regions. And here in the southeast, we're back to normal. We're out, no, there currently is no more drought, as you might just see by, with your own eyes, you know, see the pond levels up and so forth, see the streams running a little stronger. Um, what about by, yeah. the thing that uh, I worry about a little bit is the uh, – I guess the word is eutrophication. Mm -hmm. You know, that, Eddie, that's something we uh, we had a battle with many, many years ago. Yeah. We had uh, a, a, a business that was uh, willing to get in there and dig out the silt that uh, it was accumulating um, for no charge. That would, that would have been nice. And also uh, Ames Pond was another situation that needed to be uh, maintained, I guess, uh, um, because if uh, if it was allowed to continue, um, there was no place in the pond there that you could uh, you could drown. Uh, the the the, wa the water level is low. Does that sound familiar, Phil? Yes, I I can speak a little bit to that. Uh, it, it, the cause of its excessive nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen. Um, and those nutrients get in there and just cause you know plant, basically. Plant, underwater plants to grow rapidly uh, right the lily pads and the, and so forth um the at each town meeting i've been to the last three four five uh i know um jim conlin from the you know environmental uh, agent is has gone and picked a, a pond or two to treat each year to kind of um keep keep that eutrophication under control and they, I, I think he's probably planning to rotate, you know, that schedule every so many years to keep it, you know, maintain that, uh, those, you know, those ponds. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's underway. And, um, you know, I think, you know, it, the board of health is also doing whatever they need to do with the septic systems in and around pond areas to try to, uh, you know, limit the amount of nutrients reaching the, bo the water bodies. So kind of a combined effort, you know, I would say. Yeah. yeah along those lines, uh, there's uh, a eutrophication going on actually right now down my way. And that would be in uh, the pond at Knowlesbrook and the stream leading into it, say, from which up by where the stove is. The, uh, there's so much silt that's built, built up there. The stream has been narrowed. And as you get in, this just kind of occurred this year, I think, during the drought here. The pond itself um, has been reduced, and all the muck and so forth all of a sudden sprouted all sorts of plants. Right now, it's not too noticeable because we've had you know a lot of rain, but... I think that's going to be a big problem. Um, we had a pond uh, going way back when I was a kid on Mill Street. And I feel you might uh, relate to the uh, culvert that you drive over on Mill Street. Well, if you were driving, say, from Central Street onto that, and as you go to the culvert, if you look to the left, there was a pond there, and it was called Mill Pond. Richie, I'm going to call you back. That's uh, kind of I'll call you. Uh, got really far to this tree and everything else. Here. The only thing left there is a stream that goes through, and it goes actually from there down into uh, Nolesburg. I don't know if there's any uh, – I'm assuming that Quantum Nolesburg is private, so I don't know if there's any way they can uh, get that corrected down there. Uh, it would be you know, probably a good size job to do it now. So I can tell you that the, you know, there are, as Roy mentioned, there are, you know, you can dig it out and there's other means of uh, treating, but the most common and cost-effective right now is aluminum sulfate treating. Uh, 
is basically they drag around bags of aluminum sulfate and let it disperse in the water and then it settles down to the uh the pond bottoms yeah in in this case what's happened the uh the size of the ponds reduced substantially by the buildup of all the silt and stuff and then obviously the you now we're getting plants growing out of the silt so i don't know they probably need a combination uh right. but i don't imagine if that has to be done by the association it's going to be very easy to get the money up to do it but i don't know if the state if, can they go to the state for something like that or well, the aluminum sulfate treatments aren't, aren't that not really that bad you know you're talking 10 15 grand type of thing depending on the area it's not yeah not hundreds of thousands. Uh, yeah. th that may be worth a try, you know, yeah. first. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so basically we can assure the townspeople that uh, the water supply is safe to drink? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned um we, we, we're for, with regard to PFAS, we're following all the state regulations step by step. Um, it's, it's been very cumbersome. And um, as I mentioned, Muddy Pond is, uh, by this time next year, we'll be, we'll be constructing a carbon removal. You know, when they, um, when they come up with these standards, it's usually, uh, you know, it's, it's not for one glass of water or a couple. It's usually studied for a, you know, a lifetime of ingestion, you know, so, um, so progress is being made towards, you know, you know, filtering out whatever PFAS is in there. And, and on the Goddard well, it's, it's dropped back down to 12 from last month. So it's actually in compliance now. So, um, it, We'll just have to keep monitoring, testing and monitoring that to see if that's going to require anything for PFAS removal. All right. I got a, I got a last question while you got Phil here. Uh, down off of uh, 138, uh, where the town used to have some uh, equipment stored there. In back there was a thing called Cedar Swamp. And it's one time the town was doing all sorts of testing out in the, in the swamp for water. Uh, I think at the time, they abandoned it because they were still with the MDC at the time. And uh, I guess my question is, is that still viable if the town got into a problem that they could uh, maybe re, uh, do a drilling there to add a well to the system? I've read the report from the late 80s there. Uh, and uh, that's, that's from what I gather, the... the supply is plentiful. It has a lot of iron and manganese. But back in the 80s, you know, everybody ran away from iron and manganese issues. So that's, I, I'm just, I suspect that's may, may be why it's, it was abandoned, uh, pursuing that. I would say it's a viable source. Yeah. I may have some potential in the future then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Phil, the, at the corner of York street and 138, there's a, a source of water in there that I understand, uh, even though it's in Stoughton, it's owned by Canton. Is that true? I'm not familiar with it. No, no. I think isn't that just a swamp worry? I don't know. It's a it's a water supply. That's for what oh, I. Oh yeah, know. yeah. That's that's Cantons. Yeah. Oh. That's I'm vaguely familiar with that. It's all in the. If you're traveling north on 138, I think it's on the right hand side in those woods there. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's Canton supply. Any possibility of working on? Uh, Getting it back? Uh, huh, that's a <laughs> Probably not. I, I, I don't know too much about it, to be honest with you, but I can tell you in the world of, even if it was smack dab in the middle of Stoughton, if you started working on a, a new source today, it would take you seven to 10 years to get it approved. That's why if you, ha if you do have a source, you don't give up on it. Because um, it's, uh, they're, how to come by and the fact that it would be in another town uh, under another town's control and to pull that away from them uh would be rough yeah, you know talking we made it through last year's drought with our supply and we still have a little growing room to improve pratt's court by another 300 gallons a minute i, I think we're, as far as supply we're in good standing right now well that's good to hear 
I would, I would take the lower hanging fruit, fruit than, uh, you know, than that source. And as Ed mentioned, you have the Cedar Swamp that could be, you know, dust that report off and continue that in the future if needed. Well, it's good to hear your opinion about where the, our condition. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, um, our supply is adequate and we don't have to worry t too much about it at this point. But I just thought that uh, if we had that corner supply that, on, on York Street, um, it wouldn't hurt to have more than enough. Exactly. Um, if you have more than, more than enough and something happens, you have what I call operational flexibility, ability to uh, fix something and, and still rely on the, you know, the supplies you have remaining. So that's, um, but, uh, you know, redundancy, uh, if you will, but are I we, would, are we still connected to, uh, the MWRA? Yes. The emergency supply through Canton. Yes. We're running that about 100 gallons a minute right now, um, probably six to eight hours a day. Well, the, the main purpose is to keep, keep the, the water in the pipe from aging. You know, um, we could, we could certain, many days we can live without that water, but if you shut that off, then but when you go to use it, it's going to be aged water, stagnant, you know, so you don't want that. So you keep it fresh by running it just limited amount. Okay. We used to run that at 700 gallons a minute just for, for perspective, 24 hours a day. But. Well, it sounds like you have it under control, sir. We appreciate that. A yeah. um, couple of other subjects that uh, if we're done with this one, um, you guys have anything uh, further on the subject of water? Eddie? No, I'll say that uh, you cleared up a few uh, things that I've been thinking about for a while, especially to see the swamp. So, uh, thanks. Yeah. Okay. okay. Another thing that's been going on, um, and Phil, I appreciate you coming in on this. Uh, I know it was kind of a last minute thing, but I just figured we, besides Eddie, I wanted another expert. <laughs> and we got you. Appreciate that. Um, no let's get into the 9-11 um, the, the story, uh, Eddie, if you want. Yeah, I'm not, I know that's a hot topic, Roy. Uh... I just heard some scuttlebutt, but you know, uh, so I've heard that they, the town might consider uh, doing their own in the armory. And if that's the case, it'll be like final, finally a use of the armory. Uh, I don't know how solid that is, but I think what happened was uh, the town manager had something online and he was talking about um, how they were probably going to move it because of the uh, expense to update all the updates that are going to be required uh, in the next few years. And uh, move what? Move uh, move the equipment that's in the police station. So in other words, what his problem was, I guess they had a real problem with the budget this year. And I guess that was one of the things he looked at. And I think what happened was the ones that are, I think there's one in Norfolk, I think, and there's one in Holbrook uh, that are collaboratives, I guess. And I guess the town can't uh, get into either one because they're, they're somewhat crowded, I guess, by other towns. So supposedly they're thinking of starting their own, housing in the army, and try to get other towns that might uh, come on to our, to our system. Why would we, why would we want to... Uh... Uh, dilute dilute the uh, effectiveness. Uh, uh, you know, you have more than uh, what uh, you just have Stoughton on the system. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Stoughton uh, police and fire. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So well, you I guess add more cities and towns. Well, no, that would be if uh, if they decide to start their own in the armory then they would uh, solicit other towns that, you know, I guess, I think there's one in Norfolk and there's one in Holbrook that have, you know, various towns that they service. But I guess there's no room right now on either one. So the town has talked about maybe starting their own. I guess the big thing was that the, this, uh, uh, reading the town manager's letter, that there's a lot of, uh, Updates are going to be necessary, and the, the, he said we just can't, won't be able to afford them. That's kind of what the letter said. So, I think there's still, uh, I think there's still a lot of uh, unknowns there. I don't, I don't think they've made any definite uh, 
commitments, but one was that they might use the honorary. I was thinking that um, uh, the, the 9-11 system that we have in, in effect in Stoughton um, is, it's the latest, uh, the, it's the enhanced 9-11, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I just didn't want to see them messing around with it. I know we went through an awful lot to, to improve it uh, several years ago. Um, I just yeah. hope that whatever, whoever is doing the uh, sign work, it's all over town, is, uh, knows what they're doing. Yeah. Well, I think back during the summer, uh, this past summer, there was a lot of um, talk about possibly moving it, I guess, to the new fire station, I guess, when that's ever built. Um, but they relocated it to a point, or I don't know if they're going to even have enough space to do anything else to add to, you know, what they're doing now. So I guess that's, you know, it's still on the table, I guess, but uh, I guess that will be a tough decision. And it sounded mostly like it was a, a money-saving measure that the town manager came up with, but not voted on yet, so I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe they'll uh, they'll um, come up with a, a person who's knowledgeable about the whole subject, and maybe we can go through it again yep. at that point. All right. That's two subjects. Two down, and another one to go. Um, the subject that uh, Eddie and I have uh, been bannering around, uh, uh, and I figured we did put that in the show, and that's the uh, location of the new fire station. Well, yeah. The, uh, yeah, that is, uh, I went to a meeting, uh, I think maybe it was like last week, and they had it at the library, and they were talking about that, and uh, the room was packed with people, and I was surprised that most of these people seem to think that, you know, this project was a bad project from the side, as far as the location goes. Not that you and I both know that back in the, when we started on board in the 80s, uh, Paul Roach Sr. was in there several times talking to us about the need for a fire station. So this stuff was way, way back. And it's, you know, I, I just I just uh, don't know about that location. It's, uh, well, I think simply to me, if you're going to build a, a nice building like that, it should be on a major road, whether it's Park Street or wherever. And um, I think when you build something and spend that kind of money you want, you know, not any residents to see it, but I think people drive through the town. They say, hey, look at that. These guys have got a new station going on. Uh, one of the other things I, in the discussions I just heard about this, uh, uh, it was on the weekend where you know, my gang has that meeting up at Maxie there around the table. They, uh, there's, I guess, a state law that mandates that any uh, fire station in the state has to I guess how the word is any abandoned baby or somebody wants to drop off a baby that, you know, has the baby and can't uh, afford or whatever it might be, whatever reason, that they have to have the capacity to do that. And kind of an interesting thing to think about because say if people are looking for the Stoughton Fire Station, and it might be a little difficult to find up in the woods in Prospect Street. But there are a lot of other issues there. Uh, and again, I haven't walked that site. You know, you know that might be a, actually a good thing. Something should probably have like an open house type of thing, and let the people walk up through there so they can really see, you know, what it is. Because there's a lot of issues about um, an 800 foot driveway from Prospect to the uh, site. Uh, whereas, for safe was on Park Street, you need to just drive out of the garage and you're on to. Um, uh, actually, Scott Cry made some interesting uh, comments, and uh, one was the idea that Poxy being a state street, it's plowed and salted uh, a lot. And uh, his statement was, geez, you know, if, if, if we were on Park Street, we just drive out and onto a, uh, a paved street. Whereas if you're up in the woods, you know, two tenths of a mile up in the woods, then I don't know, they might have to buy a a plow for, or, a, or a loader or something just to keep that open. So there's a lot of issues there. A lot of people were not happy with the way this was done. Uh, I think part of the, that's part of the problem, I think, is Eric Bell when they uh, 
first started this uh, idea of the uh, past town manager, she was running that. And I don't know why the Board of Selectmen abdicated their powers there and gave it to the town manager and the people that work on the third floor. I guess they thought they were going to save a lot of money doing it. But, you know, there, to my knowledge, there was, there was not one Stoughton resident on on that committee. And, you know, stuff was just like, written, you know, slam down. Thank you, man, for running it. Get a special town meeting, run it through there. I mean, we're paying a note, Roy, uh, that they uh, got us involved in for almost a year now. So we're paying on a piece of property that I think they, maybe they, I think this past week they were supposed to demo the building, but and we're paying I guess an, an architect and uh, I think project managers. And I've heard that these people are getting paid too, as if they, and there's nothing going on. So it's uh, I didn't see there's a problem with uh, a battle about ownership. Well. Yeah, that's a good question too. Because the yeah, as far as I know, that's still in litigation, and I could not. How did it get about. this far? How, how how did it get that far? I mean, who didn't do their homework? If uh, well, well if I think that way. I think Roy, you had you know the previous town manager who was a resident of Rhode Island, and you had uh, a committee made up of I don't know, maybe Phil's on the same committee of uh, some uh, a lot of the people up in town hall, but. I don't think there was a lot of communication that, that was going on with the residents. And as I said, they, as far as I know, there was not one resident on that committee. Uh, it makes me think, you know, maybe they weren't really looking out for all the little small details that now have popped up because they should have done a little more homework, I think. But uh, it is what it is. And it would, you know, I guess that property in 850 Park Street, there's like eight acres. So it's a good sized parcel. And some people think that if they had the station there, they would have room to grow or because they'd have to, uh, additional acreage. Where's that? Um, where, where, where? Uh, it's by, uh, where is that? The, um, across, across from where Mermex used to be, the, the, yeah. house, the White House there that's all falling yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, I think they got it. Mr. Carter, I think, yeah. owns it. And, um, you know, it's high and dry. You know, there's no wetland problems. Some people think there are wetlands problems with the, Prospect Street site. It doesn't appear to be centrally located. Well, they said uh, at that meeting, someone spoke up for the, uh, I think it was the architect, one of those guys stood up and said that, I guess, in, in answer to a question, I guess the best spot would have been 850 Park Street, but Prospect Street was okay too, because it was close, you know, really close. Why they got into a, a legal mess, jumped into that is beyond me. Uh, still in litigation, and I understand the town took it by eminent domain. I don't know how you do that when things are in the litigation, but they, they got it somehow. And, um, you know, uh, God knows what's going to happen there because you got the, 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 uh, the veterans just still have, I guess, a claim or, or whatever. Uh, this is a fellow that bought it. Unfortunately, he bought it, and he was going to have like a little subdivision there. And, the, and ironically, the town said no because of the water. And now we're going to put another fire station up here. So, you know, uh, and then he decided maybe he would just um, have, like, he wanted like a horse type farm. And then when the town came by with uh, $1.1 million, they need a horse farm. Yeah. So there's a lot of crazy stuff that happened there. I, you know, I understand that the a check. Has been written by the town for 1.1 million. Supposedly, it's being kept in a uh, some account that the actual where it is I'm looking for under somebody's mattress. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess uh, supposedly when it's all said and done, then the judge would give that money to them. who are still standing. I guess I, you know it's crazy. And you know the thing there is already too that if uh, even if they got that settled soon. Yeah, you can have all sorts of appeals. You know, you have three different uh, entities, you know, with their fingers on it. And, you know, we might be, I don't like saying this, but we might be a long way off from, I know they want to start the fire station in April, but, you know, you get a few of these uh, board orders and stuff like that, we could be, you know, waiting. I mean, obviously, we waited long enough, but, yeah. like you said, a lot of issues there. 
Okay. Um, Phil, you, you didn't, uh, you weren't part of any group that um, uh, discussed that uh, location, are you? No, I wasn't on the committee. I was only involved with uh, water, water supply discussions. Uh, just related, but not related. Uh, we are, per the master plan, uh, we're going to do uh, Prospect Street starting this spring. Yeah. Updating the old six inch cast iron main. Uh, by old, I mean like 100 years old. 1922 was installed. We'll upgrade that to a, tw a 12 inch pipe. And uh, that'll help uh, with the pressures and fire flows and, and that whole three quarters of a mile stretch from uh, Pleasant Street all the way to Park Street, right by the fire station. Was there something sent to about a, uh, I mean, what's with the, uh, I, I don't know whether it's for uh, rainwater, what some kind of a uh, drainage device. And I guess that was going to have to be dealt with. So they may need a larger, I forget the actual name of the piece that they uh, were discussing. You know, uh, I don't know. It's uh, And then, you know, the other thing I can understand too, that area has been infested with rats. And I guess a lot of them have taken up residence in the, uh, had taken up residence in the old, uh, that's building, and they're saying, "Well, they're treating them and this and that and the other thing." But you know, I, it's my knowledge. I think once you open up a you look in the city in Boston, anytime they put a building up, the rats are just dispersed. They don't stay there; they get dispersed into other areas. And uh, you know, that was another issue for a lot of the homeowners. There. They, you know, they, they're already seeing them, and they're like really concerned that it's going to get worse. And, and it probably will. Where, where is this? Uh, what building? Well, in the building that I think they tore, did they tear, tear that down today? Uh, the the uh, VFW building? Yeah. Yeah, that's been, uh, they've been doing the environmental um, remediation inside uh, for the last month or so, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like the, asbestos pipe coverings and things like that. that kind of stuff, yeah. So I don't know, right? It's, uh, there's a, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of steps that should have been taken and because the people there are still i mean they you, it, that meeting went for a while to the credit it was a playing board meeting though so they don't really have much uh authority to do anything that should have been actually before the board of selectmen uh, public hearing there but uh to his credit uh the uh, chairman he let everybody speak and he said you know there's not a lot we can do here we can add maybe conditions but you know, those people are looking for it to be moved, basically, for what's going on. And, but to his credit, he let everybody speak until there was no one else wanted to speak. So I, I, I give the uh, chair the plain word credit for, for doing that. But uh, I think I know what the solution is, Eddie. You're not going to like it. <laughs> you you and I have to get back on the board again. <laughs> no, thanks. Been there, done that. <laughs> that doesn't sound like you. Nah. I, th I always thought you liked to have a challenge. Yeah. Getting old, man. Getting old. That's part of the problem, right? So, no, I mean, uh, it's, we all are. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's not worth it. I, got, that, I mean, I don't even do town meeting anymore. That's a loss. Yeah, I used to like it, but you know, really what it came down to is that, uh, I don't know, you just hit the spend button. That was the end of town meeting. Yeah. Well, let, let me uh, let me get back into water again. I understand there's a bit of a water problem in the town hall. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that cold snap was a rough weekend uh, all the way around. You know, for everybody, uh, not just Stoughton, but uh, frozen pipes. You know, <clears throat> it, it's up for such a mild winter. It was an episode that you know you know how cold it was. You were there. Uh, but we had a lot of um, frozen services calls. Um, no water main breaks because the frost hadn't, you know, hadn't reached any depths yet because it's been so warm in general. Uh, but that's basically what happened is the third floor, uh, I think it was a sprinkler system pipe that froze. So, and then when it, you know. Is, is it the, uh, the heated? Is it the hall heated? Well, uh, how can the pipes freeze? I don't know exactly where, you know, sometimes it can be on an exterior wall where everything's heated, but it's, it's still subject to the exterior cold. So I'm, yeah. I'm not sure exactly where it originated. Yeah. What I heard Roy was that he was just saying the, uh, the pipes were part of the, uh, uh, 
sprinkler system in supposedly they're up uh, popular way up in the top there in the I guess we're never insulated. I don't know if that would make a difference, but hopefully those pipes are, I'm assuming, are going to still be up there. So hopefully they take a measure of whether it's insulation or what to uh, that doesn't happen in the future. Um, but uh, I guess they cleaned it up pretty quickly because the uh, employees were back in town hall within a couple of days. So I think I heard that they were going to shut down the town hall for a couple of months. Is that yeah. true? I don't think they're still, they're still working up at the town hall, right? The employees. Yeah, they're going to redo everything in there for for about a month. It's, it's, oh, I, oh, okay. Just to get everything fixed up, you know. Ceilings, walls, floors. Uh, yeah. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, good chance to uh, you know get rid of some old paper and so forth. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and hanging around. Yeah. 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 Purge, um, purge the fire. Uh, what about the um, Phil? You maybe you can give us the inside poop on uh, the hole in the ground in the square. I mean, it looks like they started something, they put a foundation in, and now it's stopped again. I am not sure. I, I mean, I can only comment as to my extent of reviewing the water and sewer out there, but uh, <clears throat> you know, you probably know it's a, one of these. Uh, mixed use type of buildings where you have a couple of businesses on the first floor and underground parking and then, you know, residential uh, condos, apartments above that. So, um, you know, that's, and it's approved as far as the schedule. I'm not, I'm not um, up to speed on what, the, what the delay is or what the interruption is in this, in the construction. You got the foundation. And then, you know what it might be too, actually, uh, you know, it's, a recent town meeting uh, changed some of the zoning downtown. And I think there's one provision, if you do certain things on your site, you can get up to a five-story building. Uh, so I'm wondering, maybe the owner's kind of waiting to see, you know, where the dust uh, falls here. And perhaps he's, he may look, be looking to do something with five floors. <laughs> and whatever the conditions are, there are certain conditions you have to meet to do it, though. It's just not... By right, you know, I think you can go four, but maybe he's thinking of extending it one more four and doing whatever the town requires to get it. I, I don't know. Possibility. Well, I, I can also say that, um, you know, when these projects come across my desk, in, you know, in the, in the select boards as, as water and sewer commissioners, we're able to say yes to all these because we do have a uh, good water supply. And whereas, you know, Ed, I'm sure you, you both know that there have been moratoriums in the past, and moratoriums mean no development. So yep. at least we can say yes to these projects. <clears throat> yeah, the moratoriums in the past, I think, had a lot to do with uh, the availability of water, adequate water. Right. And that's one of the things that got us hooked up to uh, the MWRA to, to uh, ease that restriction. So with regard to the MWRA, you know, any water superintendents would, would be lying if they didn't tell you, they were, you know, it's a luxury to have that connection. Uh, you know, no regrets having it. Um, you know, it, did it cost money? Sure. Um, did we replenish our own supplies and we're fine now? Yes. But um, it's, it's, it's a tremendous um, advantage to have that, that valve there if you ever need it, if something, you know, something happens at our treatment plants. Um, Got to keep flushing out the uh, the tanks, like you said. Uh, well, yeah, there's five miles of pipe at 16 inches, so that's like a quarter million dollar, a quarter ga- a quarter million gallons of water that uh, really shouldn't just sit there stagnant. It needs to move, you know. Right. So. <clears throat> um. What else have we got, Eddie? Yeah, I got, uh, I'm going to have to refer to my notes, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I've been hearing about this for about a week or so, and that's uh, basically the town has a health care uh, insurance. Basically, it's a crisis, and it's a crisis because uh, they it, it's, it, if they do nothing to solve this problem, it's going to be insolvent by June. So... Uh, apparently, are we self-insured. We are self-insured. We are, but we don't. We're not keeping 
fun, up to date, so to speak. We, you know, we, uh, but we just made a couple of notes. Here. Um, <clears throat> supposedly, the uh, uh, you know, with the town meeting coming up, there's all these different uh, money articles. A lot of them are paid uh, through uh, cash that we have, and um, so the uh, the selectmen. It's about a two million dollar uh, problem. So the selectmen have come up with about 1.5 million in uh, projects that they are going to uh, rescind or, or take off of the uh, town meeting agenda. So by doing that with some of the articles, they they've been able to come up like it's 1.5 million. I think they've already voted on that selectmen. However, the schools they're looking to get the schools to kick in. I think it's 40, 50 thousand. So it's a dilemma for the schools because that particular amount of money, uh, it, it is a cash item uh, on the town meeting agenda coming up. But the problem is that that uh, amount of money, they have a they have a, their own article for $450,000, which would be paid by cash. And it's for um, updating security at, at the schools. So I guess the schools would have that as an option to take that off the table like the town has on theirs, or they could pay it out of their operating budget and so they don't want to do that, um, unless they have to, and they may have to. Um, and then you could try bonding, but you know, if you're running um, a little crises around, um, where the town manager's even talking about, you know, use and spending, that probably wouldn't fly too well either. But so they've got, uh, they're in a high place, I think, in the decision. I mean, if they took that um, article off the uh, table, uh, the 450 million that's uh, designed for security measures, I mean, they could still do it at a later date, but uh, I don't know which way they'll go, but, um, you know, everybody's going to have to help in that uh, to solve it. But, uh, you like you were mentioned, Ray. Uh, we've been talking short for a while, and it's you know, like money comes in and money goes out, that type of thing. And uh, let's see, I have a note here. I think it was yeah. And thirty percent of the uh, money that goes in the fund is supplied by the employees. Seventy percent of it is uh, funded by the town. So, you know. It, it seems that they have a uh, see, they have a consultant that's called uh, what was Gall Gallagher, yes, Gallagher Insurance, and you know my information is that these folks um, watch this particular fund for the town and give them advice, you know, for this insurance. And apparently, uh, their advice hasn't has been adhered to it a lot because we're down to. Because they've always said you got to keep this thing uh, balanced, you know, so you don't have a problem with it as now. But supposedly we're down to about uh, 22% in that fund now. Uh, so it's nowhere as close to 100%. That's why, that's why this is, a, a, I think it's a crisis. I, I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, uh, I don't I'm, You know, if they have to change things, uh, you know, they may have to you know, have the unions come in to decide. Uh, but before you can even get that far, you know, they're going to make sure this thing is resolved. I mean, you know, that's not too far away to get all this stuff taken care of. But uh, I'm sure that the schools were supposed to be looking at it currently. And say being and Friday, maybe they'll even be announcing some something uh, for a decision. Yeah. But guess we'll have to start keeping uh, everybody healthy. Well, the thing is, why you know, this is how we provide. Uh, health insurance for our employees. And, right. You know, you just can't, I don't, you know, you just can't let this go unheeded. This has to be done. And uh, I think, they, you know, they've got, I guess, until June to do it, but, you know, they can't wait till the last second because that thing goes uh, belly up. Uh, you have an awful lot of upset people, and rightfully so, if the insurance isn't going to be there. So, it looks like the uh, Southern have acted on their part of it now. I guess it's in the balls in the court of the schools. Um, so anyway, it's a it's a problem. And hopefully, like I said, uh, 
I mean, I'm sure they're going to fix it. They got to. They can't do nothing. So I guess that's about it. It sounds simple, but you know, obviously, it's it's going to be a tough. I think that's a tough decision for the schools. Um, I mean, they could they could put it off, you know, for whatever time it needs. But when the town manager uh, had his uh, letter online. He was kind of sounding, uh, not on this particular, but uh, the wine sign that they had to uh, cut spending. And I, I, maybe this was part of the issue. I don't know. He didn't mention it at the time, but uh, got some problems, right? And maybe, you know, maybe this, I don't know whether the uh, ping pong could help them out in this stuff or not, but it's a problem. Sell the armory, get the money. <laughs> You know, that army is going to outlive all the buildings in town. So it probably has already. Um, the I remember as a kid that we, we had, they had uh, dancers there, and uh, I think it was two of the police officers, uh, Officer Kelly, and I forget the other fellow. They kind of ran it. And uh, even now, after all these years, I'll run into people from other towns and I'll say, Still, nice little thing, army dancers there. So it did get a lot of use back in the day. And the thing, you know, is they used to have army vehicles putting tanks in there. Uh, that I, I don't know how thick that cement floor is. It was pretty thick. So yeah. I hope they get to use it. All right. Uh, pardon the, the uh, dog barking that you heard in the background. He's uh, he's letting us know that uh, the time is just about up. And you all have a, a shot at... Um, uh, last minute thoughts you might have before we uh, close out the show. Yeah, I got a, a, another quickie uh, that's lurking out there. And uh, as you probably know, we have a, a building uh, committee. Uh, a what? A building committee for a new South uh, school. And it's just in the preliminary stages now. But. Uh, there's talk out there that they're going to eliminate one school, go from five to four. So that begs the question, who's, whose school is going to close? Because back in the day, you had, you know, the north, the south, and the west, and all that. They used to build uh, schools in different areas of a town or a city so they would be close for the students, you know, because back then everybody was pretty much on a bus or walking. Um uh, but that's all obviously has changed. But the thing is, they're talking about uh, a new school that would go, and, and they're talking about doing it at the south. Uh, uh, yeah, at the south, maybe on that piece of property that the town tried to use. Um, they would go, it would almost double the size of the, the uh, south school going from, I mean, if you had 225 students up to 515, so almost wow. double the size. But the thing is, uh, now the parents out there but just get on board, and, and when they have these meetings, you, you better go to them because no one knows what school is going to be eliminated. Yeah, well, that sounds like a subject for an upcoming show, Eddie. Yeah, I think you could probably do a whole whole show on something like that. So, yeah, and, keep keep making those notes. Yeah. <laughs> Any room in the uh, new high school to merge uh, the elementary school kids in there? In the high school? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Why would you do that? Well, I mean, the, the you wouldn't have to build them. anything. You've got it. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's, full, it's in full use of the thing. No, I, I'm of the impression I, I that uh, the population is uh, uh, reducing, is becoming reduced. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't really know about that. So, yeah. Uh, less sh oh, less showers. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's just worth. Uh, Going to coffee at the local coffee shops because this is like where you hear a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Being talked at the tables with the counters and stuff like that. So, but anyway, that's something uh, I think has to be people have to have their eye on because, as I say, the word is it will go from five schools to four. You know, whose neighborhood is going to get affected? Yeah. Phil, any last minute thoughts that you might have? Uh, just uh, what we're pursuing. Uh, what my thrust of work here is a little bit more on the supply side, Pratt's Court, as I mentioned, and um, completing the meter program. We're about 40, 45% complete now, and uh, 
just getting that uh, old, old meat is read slow and slow meat is lose revenue. So that's, and it, we need to get it compatible with our uh, metering system. So to become more efficient. So those are the things I got coming up. How do you like your new home? You're in the waterworks, right? Uh, this, I'm in it now. Yes. <laughs> now? Nice historical building. And, Isn't uh, it something? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really quite a building. Yeah. It's, uh, we're, we're, uh, putting some life into it. Yes. Yeah. So you hunt across all the old types of valves and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. You. you know, you could be a, a museum curator there. <laughs> well, we're, keep, we're keeping everything we can, you know, the, yeah, model, yeah. the build generator and motors right. and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. It's kind it's of nice like... It, nice that it's getting some use. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, gentlemen. I think um, we should close out the show. It's been very informative. I appreciate, uh, Eddie, you coming up. Uh, you know, I know you're kind of shy and, and stuff like yeah. that, but... Thank you for uh, your input in the show. And Phil, I appreciate your last minute uh, acceptance to my, uh, to my last order. And uh, um, your, your input was very uh, useful. We appreciate it. All right. Yeah, no problem. All right. That's it. So All right. See you guys. Have a good weekend. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye.